In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the Make Editor and show you all the features that are available when you're building your scenarios. Hi, my name is Andy O'Neill and I create content on this channel for business owners to help them clarify and automate their business processes. I often find that clients, when they're using Make, don't have an idea of all the features that are available in the Make Builder. I'm going to show you each one of those and kind of do a tour over all of those and explain what they do. So I've created a brand new scenario in Make. And the first thing I want to do is look at this circle in the middle. This is where we can add a module. That's what these circles are all called. And our first module in Make is always our trigger. The ones after that are actions or searches. But the first one is a trigger. And really, the first one can also be a search and be the trigger for the scenario. So let's add a module here. I'm going to add Google Sheets and I'm going to add the search row. Now, if you notice there, when I click that, let me delete that and back up just a second. When I click this, I can search for the module I want. So let's search for weather. All right, now here are all the weather modules we can add. This time I'm going to put weather in there and get current weather. As you can see, we have this little red circle here. That means my module's not filled out correctly. It needs one thing added to it to make it correct. And here's the item I need to add. I can add city, it suggests London, UK. I'm going to add that. If I click OK, that error goes away. So when you click on the module, like this, you get the settings. You can also right click and do settings. That's an extra click, but these are the settings for our module. Because this is a timed module, we can right click and we can say run this module only. So if we had a scenario with several steps, we could just run this module and get results just like we have here. And here is the weather for London in the UK. Next, if we want to add a module, we can click right on here on this little button. You see how it turns into add another module button. If you click that, you'll get a gray circle there that appears where you can put your second module. I'm going to click Google Sheets. So let's say we want to put the weather in a Google Sheet every day. And again, I have this long list of things that I can look for it, or I can just type here at the bottom, add, and it shortens it and it gives me add row, add a sheet, perform a function. I'm going to click add row. So that search makes it really easy to find the type of module and the action or trigger module that you want. As you can see, I haven't finished configuring my Google Sheets. I'm just going to leave that alone right now while we go through the rest of our tour. Another thing you can do with all modules is if you right click here, you can add an error handler. And this gives you options here for adding error handlers. You can also search and let's say uh, you want to send yourself a Slack message or an email when there's an error. You can do that here and just go down here and search. I want to type email and I'll click that module and I'm going to send an email. So now what's going to happen, and again, I've got an error. I didn't finish configuring that module. If there's an error with my weather and it doesn't go to, the, to module three, my second step, it's going to send me an email and you can put whatever you want in that email. Something else we can do, and I'm going to show you right quick. I'm going to jump ahead. I'm going to click the auto align button and that kind of centers and pretties everything up. The next thing I'm going to show you on your modules, if we right click here, we can click or we can choose rename. So I can say weather for London. And now this top line here has renamed as weather for London, this bottom line will always say what the module does. So it's going to always say get current weather, but I can rename these and give them names that are a little more smart and talk about, uh, you know, describe what the module does. The next thing I can do is I can copy a module. So let me go up here. Let me right click and let me uh, copy this module. And if I right click and paste, it will add the same module with the same mapping right there. Now let's delete that. That's another option here. Another thing you can do is hold the shift key on your keyboard and draw a box around modules. Uh, I could draw a box around multiple modules. I could draw a box around all of these. And if I hit control C or I right click and copy them, I can come over here and I can either right click and paste or I can do a control V and it will copy those, oops, copy those modules. So you see, and I have an exact copy. Oh, and it automatically it tries to auto connect to. Uh, I, I have a copy of those three modules right here. The other thing you can do is go to a new scenario and make, and you can also paste them there. Now, similarly, if I want to get rid of these, I'm going to hold shift down. I'm going to draw a box around them. I'm going to hit the delete button and they go away. We just talked about copying and pasting. The other thing you can do here is clone. And what that does is it just immediately creates another copy of that module. The other thing you can do, as we've talked about, is you can delete modules. Uh, you can also add a note, which opens a note section over here. 
and you can add notes about a scenario module uh, and just document it or put notes in there for your reference later. Okay, let's talk about scheduling. And if you look at our trigger here, we have a clock. That means this scenario is a scheduled trigger. It'll look for new data on a schedule based on how you set it up. So if we click right here on the clock, you can see this is going to run at regular intervals and it's going to run every 15 minutes. Now, if I was really trying to get the weather for London and put it in a Google sheet, I don't want it to run every 15 minutes. I would rather it run every day. So I can pick every day and I can pick the time of day. The other options we have here is once you can say, I want it to run one time and stop and you can give it a date and a time. We can do days of the week. So we can do, we can check what days of the week we want it to run. Uh, and give it a time of day for running. Next, we can do days of the month. We can pick what days of the month. Maybe you have something you want to run on the first of every month. Uh, you can click the first and give it a time to run. Next, you can do specified dates. So you can pick months and the day of the month uh, and the time you want that to run. If we go to advanced settings, you have a start and end date. So maybe you want it to start in January and end in March at the last day of March. Uh, you can also do that. There's also options that I didn't really talk about when you open advanced for these other settings. So for regular intervals, we can do advanced scheduling and we can give it a time from two. I will use this a lot with clients who are only open. Let's say they work, you know, uh, at the earliest 7 a.m. to 6 or 7 p.m. That's kind of their day. And there's no reason to run scenarios all night long because they're not processing orders or that kind of thing. So what you can do is you can say at regular intervals, Let's say we want to do it every hour and we want to start at seven o'clock a.m. and we want to end at yeah, 6 30 p.m. So this is only going to run from 7 a.m. to 6 30 p.m. And let's say the business is only open Monday through Friday. We do this and now what's going to happen with the scenario is I'm going to save a lot of operations. We're not going to run it on the weekend. We're not going to run it overnight. We're only running it during business hours when things are happening with the business. Now, this doesn't fit every case, but it is a way to save operations if your business only does business during certain working hours. You can also see your scheduling right down here. If I click this and open it, it opens just as if I clicked on the clock. You can also click this play button to run the scenario once, and you can do that manually even when it's off. Right down here, you can turn the scenario on and off. Let's look at the buttons across the bottom. This is the save button. I would tell you save often. I'm going to jump over here to these three dots. The reason is every time you save, make creates a previous version. So you can see here, here's the previous versions of this scenario. And if I want to go back to one of them, I can click here, I click OK, and this is the previous version. This version will not stick until you save it. So if I were to refresh the page without saving, I'm going to go back to the version I was at. So it's important to save really oft often because if you mess up a module, you can go back to that previous version. All right, let's go back down here. These are our scenario settings. This is our notes. We can open and close our notes there. This is the auto align. We've already used that. This is an explain flow and it's kind of neat, but it doesn't really help too much. When you click that, it just has little dots that hover and fly through your scenario. Also on the three dots, you can have, you can import or export a blueprint. A blueprint is a JSON file, J S O N file that contains all the information about your scenario. So if you had a scenario that you wanted to export, you could click here, save it to your computer, send it to a freelancer or a friend or give it to other people who use make, they can import that scenario and they will import exactly what you built. Now it won't have your connections because of security, but will it will import the scenario into their account where they can use it. Down here at the bottom, we have tools. So here's flow control. Here are uh, the different tool modules you can use. This is the text parser module. And then here's some of your favorites. You can see I've used weather and Google Sheets. So Make has populated there and said, oh, these must be your favorites for this scenario. We're going to populate those down there. You can also click here to add a new module. Okay, if we exit the edit mode and click on this circle right here, this goes back to our scenario page. Here is a history of all the things that have happened with this scenario. So I ran this once right here. So if I click details, you can see I ran this. Here's the data. Uh, you can see the raw data here and here for this scenario. 
and this keeps track of the executions that happen. Now most, most accounts, make accounts, will save these for 30 days. We're back on our diagram page and one of the things I would encourage you is every time you create a new scenario is to rename it. And you can see I renamed the scenario right away when I created it for this video. If you don't, you'll get kind of generic names. It'll, it'll say uh, weather, Google Sheets, integration, or something like that, which is, you know, if you have several with weather or Google Sheets, that's not going to be very helpful. So rename it, give it a really keyword rich name that if you would say, okay, if I was going to Google for this, what would I type? Use those keywords here so when you're searching for your scenarios in Make, they're easier to find. If my scenarios or my scenarios for a client are a part of a process, I'll actually number them one, two, three, four, whatever, so I know what order they happen in and they're easy, easy to sort alphabetically. When those numbers are sorted alphabetically, those scenarios are in the order that they happen for my client's process. That's about it for the tour. I want to show you one more trick that you may not know about, but before we do that, if you would hit the like button, maybe subscribe so you don't miss future videos, and check out the playlist of my other Make Beginner videos. All right, so we're back in the editor, and let's say you want to add a router right here. So let me actually clone this, put some of our knowledge into, into good use, and I could add a module, but the other thing I could do is if I drag this to the weather mod module, make, make says, oh, you're trying to connect two to this, I'm going to add a router for you. So it automatically adds that router and saves a few click as you're building your scenario. If this video was helpful to you, please hit the like button. It lets me know I'm on the right track in creating content that people want. And if you get stuck with Make and want some one-on-one -on -one help, head over to my website, weblitica.com. The link is in the description below, and we can get you set up with some one-on-one -on -one premium support to help you build your scenarios.